disagreement with anybody before then. And that day, those men beat and humiliated him as they put him out of our home. I never, ever forget that humiliation in front of the woman and children he loved and respected and who loved and respected him. Every time I think about it, I could cry. That was 1840. And we couldn't have foreseen that anything worse than being evicted from your rightful home by foreigners could happen. We were left to the mercy of our friends and relatives who soon ended up in the same predicament as us. But worse was to come. And that was in 1845, when we lay by the sides of the roads eating grass and dying. And once more, we had to beg those same human beings that had taken our homes, our work, our sacred way of life. We literally had to beg them for the scraps of food that they were feeding their hinds. I was the only survivor in my family from the family. I experienced the coffin ships. And there was nobody there to occur if I lived or died. But I lived. When I arrived in America, I couldn't speak one word of English. But I communicated by singing and dancing. My mother and father had taught all their children to be Irish, to be proud of their Irish and never to deny it. And that's what I did. We're a proud people. A noble people who love culture, simplicity, and truth. 
I danced when I was among strangers to communicate. And I sang songs in my own language to let them know that I could speak, even though they couldn't understand. Our song is our own. We have our own song and dance. Britain can never have that boast. And they can never take away from us the inner spirit that makes us sing and dance. I am of Ireland, of the Holy Land of Ireland. Come pray thee, good sir, for sweet charity. Come and dance with me in Ireland. 